Um, right here is, of course, part of the rigging. If it will come loose on me, there we go. And the backpack, which today I'm going to rig up in here. Fits in like this. And it snaps like that. Pretty simple. And I left a gap here because in the actual artwork, there actually is a little bit of a gap, so I left that gap like that. So yeah, so that's how it's coming out. And the fur uh, a nice bit of fur from um Joanne's crafts. Fake fur, you know. up here somewhere. Yep. That's always very, very hard, man. No matter who's doing it, uh, unless you're going to um, sculpt and mold it. But even that can be tricky, too. So, the question for you with your, with your art girl, um, looking at that picture, that head is really, really small. So, are you trying to build it so that your head is in the chest, or that your head is actually in the helmet itself? Which way are you trying to go with that? Track that bad boy down later, wherever I stuck it at. This bag here is basically full of my um, nylon strappings, some Velcro, and some elastic. Yeah, I could definitely um, build that.
Hey, get girly. Not get so much for the host, huh? But yeah, I do agree with Veldar on this one. Um, as far as the actual design of it, I would use those fists in the neck as as eye ports for you to be able to look through, and just make the head a static piece. You know, light up the eyes and stuff. I guess that's what I would do. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and use some pure black. I'm not going to thin it out at all. Just to go over the belt some more. I want it a little bit darker. One of the, tr one of the tricks or observations that I've noticed that when you're looking at armor that's worn, unless it's like a an emblem or a badge, but the armor itself, uh, nothing should actually be one pure color. Nothing. Because one means just that. Some parts have faded. Some parts might still be bright, you know. So, um, when, you, when you're doing your paint jobs, keep that in mind. You still, you should, you should see some color fading in and out here and there throughout your piece, you know. And that normally helps when you work off of one base color to start off with. Like since this armor is predominantly like a burgundy color, you know, I went ahead with a red first and covered the entire thing up with the red. And then just slowly darkened it up, you know, from there. does make a difference when you, when you do it that way. Makes a serious difference. Now because this is jet black, I'm being real careful, real, using it real sparingly, because it is a very, very powerful color. Hey Lord, how you doing man? And once again, because I'm using the airbrush paint, you know, which is an acrylic base over an enamel, it's gonna um give my client some, some room in here to bend this armor and not worry about the paint crackling or wrinkling on her, you know? Well, depending on how you built your suit, it could be. Um, you could also make extensions. You could actually build the arms up 
the shoulder up tall on your own shoulder, but you can still have the attachments up in here so as you move your arms, it'll still move, you know, sort of, sort of normally. Um, now, in a suit like that, you're going to be extremely limited in motion. You really are. It's just a big bulky suit. You know, so you kind of got to get ready for that. Um, even if you may have so that your head was actually in the, the head, you know, where it belongs in the suit, you're still going to be real, real limited in how well you can move your neck around. Because you have that whole outer harness covering the entire head, basically. You know, you're going to be able to move your head maybe three or four degrees in each area. And I doubt you're going to be able to actually even look down. Because you got that piece coming up like this. Right in your neck area. You know, um... It's a, it's a cool suit, but it's definitely very, very tricky. And it's not conducive to the actual human form. So you're going to have to make a lot of edits, a lot of changes in that design to make it work for the human body. Now, I was um, talking about that last week when I was streaming that, you know, one of the most difficult things is converting a 2D character to a real human's body. Because our bodies flow differently and move differently. So you've got to be able to make allowances for our joints, being able to see, being able to bend, you know, all that good stuff. Yeah, the head is really, really small in contrast to the body, which is why I mentioned maybe, like, you know, agreeing with Veldar and Minga that you can actually see through the slits in the neck, you know, um, be a lot easier for you. I mean, I mean, granted, there, there are ways you can you can make the boots work. Um, of course, they'll have to be like this and not pointed like that because, you know, just balance reasons. <laughs> you know. But, it's a very cool design, though. Yeah, if it, if it was me, my, my actual eyes would be in the neck of that suit. It actually would be. Because the, um, the arms and the shoulders, you know, go well beyond the height of the head anyway. You know? Um, so it would make more sense for me to put my head in the neck area and just look through the slits. And also, I highly recommend you put a fan in your suit. You know, I would say two. One to suck in the air and one to blow air out. You know, in my Reinhardt cosplay, I'm having multiple fans throughout that suit. Hey, uh, Chewbacca man, right now I can't do it. I am extremely busy. Um, as I do this for a business, I've got other projects planned that I gotta knock out. Some of them I do at the same time. You know, like I'm, I'm working on my, um, a Wukong headpiece for the one client. Another one I'm doing a, um, Elvin Tiara type thing for her and a different client. I really don't have the time, unfortunately. You know, um, that's the one thing about 
getting popular when you do it as a business. You know, I plan my work out months in advance. You know, and I'm always busy, man. Um, so unfortunately, I can't take out that time to, to do a detailed drawing for you as if it was my own. Um, and another reason is, I don't know what your body type is. You might not be my body type. You know, I'm tall and big. You know, so if it can be different drawing up for me than it would if you were short and skinny. But I will say this much. Um, if you have Photoshop or maybe GIMP, what you can do is take a picture of you standing in the same pose as the Arc Girl Login. And then um, in GIMP or Photoshop, you can take the picture of the Arc Girl. You can put it up as one layer. And then you can take the picture of yourself and overlay it and then shrink it down so it fits inside the suit that'll give you a good idea of how to build it for, you, for your body type it's an old trick and it works a lot especially if you're not an actual artist it definitely is a good tool to use Hey, Cassie. All right. Let's, uh, yeah. Let's take this backpack out. Right now, it's not needed. As you can see, I'm constantly turning the piece around, looking at it from various angles, just making sure I'm, I'm not missing anything. Thank you much, Alex. Thank you much. It is definitely a labor of love.
that's looking looking good. <laughs> now once again when I compare it to the um, to the concept art, which you know should always should. That's pretty damn close. Yep. I kind of wonder though, why is it in all the concept art they put silver trim on the pauldrons, but everywhere else is gold trim? You know. I wonder about that. No, it's kind of it's kind of weird, you know. If, if you're gonna make trim, you know, on, on armor, it all should match, basically. You know. But yeah, because like, even the um, even the emblem here is gold, you know. It really came out cool too, because I used the um. I'm using my wood burning tool and I actually burned in the emblem. So it has a nice hammered look. Like it actually had, yeah, I forgot what the tool was called, but it's an actual like metal spike with a flat end. And the blacksmith would actually get a big old hammer and bang on to put that depression into the um the armor. So I pretty much got the same the same effect with the wood burning tool. And then painting behind that, it really gives it a nice Worn yet you no know, fresh look. Which I should put a little bit of black in here too. Not a lot, just a little touch here and there. There we go. Just a little something something. Just to knock the freshness off. <laughs> Because it has to look warm. Like I said, nothing should be one, you know, clean, bold, solid color. It all should have some type of, you know, um, dirt on it, I guess you, you you would say. You know, a worn look. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Alright, so... I have to dry a little bit more before I do any rigging on that just yet but I can talk about rigging so you guys can at least uh, have an idea of what you go through when you rig stuff um, let me put this in the sink first Basically, um, 
couple of tools for the trade, like I mentioned earlier. Nylon strapping, elastic, thin, and thick pieces. And Velcro. Uh, when it comes to the Velcro, I only get the industrial type of Velcro. I don't go f for that cheap ass stuff you get, you know, from other stores. Um, you buy this from Home Depot, Lowe's, hardware store. Get your stuff from. And the reason why I go for the industrial <coughs> is because it's really, really strong. You know, you can glue it to like clock radios and stick it under a counter and or. Uh, a cabinet and it will hold all that weight so it's important to have that type of tensile strength when you're rigging up armor because you don't want pieces of, of your armor to fall off you know so it's very very important to have the good stuff you know um, another tool to trade parachute clips varying shapes and sizes you know I got some tiny ones here medium sized ones and really really big ones like here. I'm actually going to use this one here for the loincloth tunic which is going to go here. Which will be the first piece that I rig up so you guys can see how that is. And pretty much this is going to be up on the inside back piece. Like that. So you can't really see it. That's the thing else too. Unless the actual artwork you know, is showing a clip there, you want to always try to hide it. You know, if, if if at all possible, sometimes you really really can't depending on the design. But you know, if you have to glue a top piece onto this to cover it, you know, do it, or um, even use Velcro, you know, as a, as a, a top cover. Then you go ahead and you put your other piece on, on top of that, so it hides it. Do that. Um, there is a site online. And I didn't post up the link. I'm going to look for it later. But it's a place where you can buy parachute clips that are bent. Hey, Yoko Rose. Thanks for the follow. Welcome to the clan. You are a proud dragon warrior. But yeah, they're actually curved parachute clips. Which, believe it or not, really come in handy. Um, when you're doing stuff from the sides of the body. You know, or even on top of the shoulder sometimes, depending on how you're putting that piece together. Curve hands, your clips rock. Which reminds me, I gotta make another order too. Buy some more. I normally buy them like, well, lots like 30 at a time. It's just cheaper that way. This is another thing you could use as well. Um, not so much a harness thing, but if you gotta put something on your suit that has to rotate or spin, these are really, really helpful for that, or any version of these. Um, pretty much, it's like um, a cylinder. No, oh, put it over here. It's like a cylinder with a screw and you can pop a hole into your foam and then use like some um, Wonderflex or washer to put around this or so a bit, bit wider area and then you just simply screw this bad boy on like so so the actual EVA foam will be resting on this piece right here so it can spin and rotate you know but still be held together so it's a good thing to use for it. I think they're called um, Chicago screws. <coughs> Thank you so much for the follow, Demoshi. Welcome to the clan. You are now a proud dragon warrior. <laughs> all good, Yoko. All good. <laughs> now, I really wonder where the hell I put that fur at. The 
gorilla fur. Yeah, I don't know what, um, where I put it. I had it in the bag. Maybe it's over here. In my other bag of cloth. Well, it's okay, because that gorilla fur is the very, very last thing I'm going to do on here before I seal everything, so. Alright, so what we can do right now is work on the, um, her, her bars, her, um, insignias, which is on her collarbone of her armor. So we're going to go ahead and build that real quick and get that ready for painting. So it's going to be a blast though when I can go back to working on um, my Reinhardt cosplay. There is so much stuff um, in there for me to have fun with and play around with. Alright, so first I'm going to cut off the tabs here, the teeth, because I don't need these. Sure, Velvet Man, go ahead and post. Serious, seriously good, man. Yeah, I, I want to see part of a picture of that one. I definitely want to see what's on it. That's some shit I would build on the real.
never feel anything. Nice, nice. Fox McCloud figurine. <laughs> nice. again. Go for it. Um, Veldar, one of the things you can do, you can use, um, Wonderflex to do your scales, but if you do this, you have to coat it with something so it stays stiff and hard. Um, you can also use EVA foam, the thinner sheets, like this here, this is a 6mm, um, thick piece of foam. So you can use that and just, you know, hand cut out all the pieces. The third option, and this is the most expensive one, would be to get some clay, taking, you know, shape up three or four pieces of um, the scales. And then what you want to do is make a mold. Like this right here. Um... I was doing a project for a client and he needed, well, according to the artwork, he needed a whole bunch of these small type horns. So what I did was I sculpted one out of clay to the size that I needed. And then I went ahead and I made a big old mold block, you know, with them. This took a mold block holds two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven pieces. And then all I do is I pour in the molding compound into each one. I let it set, then I just pop them out. So you can do that as well for your scale and get some decent scales in a pretty fast turnaround. You know, um, if it was me, I'd probably go with this option because um, each of your scales would be real durable, you know, real tough, drillable. You know, um, but it does cost a bit of money. You know, because you gotta buy a mold compound. You can buy like a trial size, and it's like 30 bucks. This is called Umu silicone mold material. Um, and you will probably have to buy um, maybe a gallon of the smooth cast, which is this right here. It's a um, polyresomer plastic. Really, really good stuff. You know, uh, I said if you want to go this route, which is the route personally I would go, because it's going to save you a lot of time in the long run. And if you ever got to use scales again for anything, you've got your permanent mold of it. So it'll also save you time in the long run, too.
<laughs> All right. <laughs> That shield, I would definitely build out of um, EVA foam. I would definitely do that because most other materials you try to use for it, you know, um, will end up being heavy. And you figure if you're going to be at a convention and you're walking around 8 to 10 hours a day with that shield, you want it as light as possible. Plus, there are things you can do to coat the shield to give it a bit more durability if you need that. Um, or you can just, just use a thicker EVA foam. Um, when I built the shield for um, S2 games, I used an inch thick foam. Trust me, that shit was solid, stiff, and tough. And if you haven't seen that shield, uh, Dream or Skyrock, if you guys can go to my Facebook and pull up the picture of the um, the Strife shield. Please do that and link it in chat so they can see it. So yeah, the game is called Strife. Uh, I was hired by S2 Games to make some of the props for their um, their heroes in their, in their MOBA. So I did um, Claudette's Dragon Shield and, and, and Dragon Claw Sword. I did um, Shanks, Mask, and Ball and Chain. And I also did Featherstone's Gun and um, the Gun Holster and the Gun Belt. That was a fun commission to do too. So right now, I just did a quick drawing of her emblem, which goes on her collarbone, basically, just to um, get an idea if this is going to be a good enough size, whether it's too big or too small, before I actually cut out anything of the phone. Okay, let's pull up the artwork again. Go. I think this is a little bit small. Yeah, but I'll do this bigger. Everybody all ready for Christmas? Got all your gifts bought? That's oh, no, I went to <laughs> uh, no, I got my shit done a long time ago. Mm -mm. I do not like shopping anywhere near or around Christmas. Nope. Because people tend to act the gut. Yeah, people tend to act the goddamn fool. So I try to avoid that for all possible. That or online shopping. I love online shopping. No lines. You know, get what you want. You're good to go. I think everybody's starting to do that more often. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. That Black Friday sale shit, that's bullshit. Mm-mm. People get hurt out there. <laughs> doing them damn sales, so. There you go. See, that's smart. That's smart. And that's pretty much what me and my lady does as well. If we see something that we know somebody in the family wants, you know, and, and it's on a good sale, yeah, we snatch that shit up and just, you know, just pack it away, you know. Yeah, I got 
my got my lady and got her son some pretty pretty cool gift. They're gonna have a really good Christmas this year. Yeah, like when I when I got her son um finally a tablet. He's been asking and asking for a tablet and I've been telling him you gotta earn that shit. <laughs> gotta earn it. You know, just you know, we'll just give our handouts around here. No, 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 no. I saw I grew up, you know, I I learned how to appreciate the value of a dollar. And when somebody does give me a gift, you know, so I'm gonna show I hand down those same values to him, you know. Yeah, cause I, I I don't do spoil spoil kids. No, no, we 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 don't we don't flow too well together. But yeah, I can just sit there in that corner and, and spin. <laughs> Ain't nothing gonna change. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny when you think about it. Um, growing up as a child, thinking your parents were the devil and all they did was was hate on you and stuff. And, and for some kids, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, it's true. You know, but you know, when you get to be an adult, you start realizing the wisdom of some of the stuff they was trying to bang into your head. You know, unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, it can definitely get expensive, which is also why it's good to shop, you know, throughout the year sometimes, even after Christmas sometimes, you know, get those those seriously crazy sales, um, you know, that way you're straight for the next year, and it doesn't break your wallet that way, because you're doing it over time, you know. <laughs> so I guess they really love some cave biomes, huh? Okay, let's see. Alright, this is a little too big. Alright, so I have to find a midpoint now between those two. fuck up, you get dinged for it. <laughs> it is a lot of work, no lie, um, just for a parent, because you become their coach. So, 
basically you're, you're all a teacher in a lot of ways you know um I do try to teach him self-reliance and I pretty much tell him you know listen what the teacher says you know you follow their instructions then if you are stuck come to me don't just come to me right off the jump try to actually figure it out yourself you know and by me teaching him teaching him that he, he learns to tackle problems by himself first you know not become dependent upon somebody else to give them the answer or show them the right way you know <laughs> there are lights all throughout the inside of that suit all throughout um he was a lot of fun to, to build and, and wear and walk around in. I do want to do upgrades to him, um, which I will do probably sometime next year. That's another thing about cosplay. Um, you're never actually quite done with your suit. <laughs> you're always wanting to add something to it to improve it, you know. Anybody who, who has that time, I would definitely recommend homeschooling their kids because our school systems are pretty much set up now to, to just breed a slave force. They're not made to uh, allow kids to be original thinkers, think outside the box, be able to tackle shit besides the basic drivel they put out there. You know, um, it's definitely a lot better than public schools. Oh, yeah. Any, any, any school system that's not in the United States, it's going to be better. <laughs> Way better. Even in Sweden, they have one of the best rated school systems out there. You know, I think it's like um, 12 kids to a teacher in, in, you know, in all the classes, which is a good good, good number, you know. Um, but, yeah, United States, unless you're paying for an Ivy League school, yeah, the public school system sucks. Okay, are you a person who likes a lot of story or a lot of action? Yeah, because Destiny has a shit ton of action. I have it on my Xbox One. Graphics are pretty, but it is extremely limited on story. I mean, granted, it's a 10-year project with Destiny, so they're, they're slowly putting out new content and whatnot, but... It's it's nowhere near like an MMO. Nowhere near. It's an it's an action first person shooter, really. Um, GTA. Eh, I'm if you're that one too. Um, granted, this is the most unique one out of all the other ones. But um, honestly, I would say Dragon Age. Get Dragon Age. That shit is off the hook. Plenty of action, real, real in-depth stories. Storylines branch out different ways. There are different ways to get every character in the game, which is amazing. Um, 
there's a multiplayer aspect of it as well which is a lot of fun I tried it last week for the first time with some friends of mine you, know, you link up online you know, through the origin site and you run through dungeons with your characters and you can level level them up unlock other characters you can craft in the multiplayer mode I have never seen a game like that where you can craft it has a really really deep system to it um, lots of fun the first day we um, tried it out, I tell you, for two hours, we didn't have so much fun getting our asses kicked. We were laughing and just just enjoying the entire experience, you know. Um, but I would definitely say you get yourself Dragon Age Inquisition. It's an amazing game, truly amazing. I played Wig. Oh, League of Legends. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I played it. Had my ass handed to me. <laughs> but I did play it. <laughs> it, it. It's an okay game. It's, it's an okay game. You know, when you want to just jump in, if you want to you know, get your kill off a little bit, do that. Um, I don't like the community around it. Um, a, lot, a lot of my ass hats. They really truly are. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan of that. I love Landmark community though. That community just freaking rocks. People are very, very helpful. You know, of course you got you got a few assets here and there too, but on the on the whole, one of the best communities hands down that I've ever seen in any MMO. What you mean heavy? I mean, put it this way. My girlfriend's son is 11 years old and I bought the game for him. <laughs> you know, so um, it's not that heavy that a minor can't play it. You know, um, but it's just in depth. It is a really, really good, good purchase for 60 bucks. It really is. I'm all about getting the most bang for my buck with a game. And that one there, you get a lot of bang for your buck. I can't see nobody not liking Dragon Age, really. It, it hits so many different levels, you know. Um, if you're a person who likes a lot of action, you're covered. If you're a person who loves a deep story, you're covered. If you like plot twists, you're definitely covered there with the plot twists. You know, if you love the craft, you're covered there. They got a very, very unique crafting system. Um, and it's fun. Oh, oh. Oh, um, well, you can buy Dragon Age for your Xbox. Wait, Xbox 360. PS4, Xbox One, or your PC, so you have options. Um, for the PC, I think it is like 26 gigs uh, for, for a download. Um, if your video card is, I would say, more than three years old, you may want to get a new one. Um, if you have, I would say, anywhere from eight to... Hmm, 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM, you're, you're definitely well above board for, for, for that. You know, um, you can also turn down the settings in the game too, you know, if, if you want. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm, I am definitely what I consider um, a true gamer where I don't limit myself to just one, um, gaming element you know I have console and I have PC and I, I love them all equally you know there, there, there are things you can get in one you can't get in the other you know so um, I don't limit myself to just one genre of entertainment it's good to have multiple forms
right, so I think this final sketch here should be the one that I need to fit properly. Tell you what though, I can't really wait till the day where somebody comes out with a really freaking powerful console that all the game companies decide to start making games for that console. Cause I think personally it's kind of ridiculous to have, I mean granted, competition is good. It's healthy for the market, it's good for the consumer, but I would really love it to where either the companies just start making games for all three consoles out there, as well as PC, you know, or uh, make one console that can play them all. Because to me, it makes no sense to have all that, that damn hardware just to play one game, you know? Yep, yep. And you know, we use a good console. Yeah, it's, it's definitely cool, you know, but yeah, we need to wake their asses up because yo it makes no sense throwing out hundreds of dollars all the time just to play one game on one console when they could have easily made it so that it worked in all that are out there Oh, nice, man, nice. Ooh, wait. You know, I hope before I die and leave this planet, they come out with a nerve gear. I will be all over that shit. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll wait about a week or two. You know, see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, then, then, you know, go get me one and put it on. Hey, Vegam, how you doing, man? Well, it's not, it's not Christmas just yet. You know, we got a couple more days. But, um, yeah. I got, I got something good planned for both my lady and her son. Let's see. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay, sweet. Let me just finish trimming this off and I can then cut this out. <laughs> you know the funny thing is, uh, I read a I read an article, I read an article a few months back. There are actual scientists and engineers right now that are actually working on a holodeck. Oh hell yeah! So they get that holodeck up and running. That's the first step right there. You know? Because we already got 3D goggles. Now the, um, I forgot what the hell it's called that they just came out with. Um, damn, I can't think of the name of it. But they, they have a pair of really, really decent 3D goggles out now. Which works for a lot of different games. Can't think of the name of it though. Yeah, there they go, the Oculus. Yep. And from what I've seen, it's pretty damn sick. And um, one of my fellow streamer friends, Geek Girly, she actually had a chance to try them on. One of her friends has one, and she raved about it. It's just amazing. But unfortunately, she gets motion sickness too, so <laughs> she couldn't have more too long. <laughs> I 
I hear you. You know, the funny thing about it, and, and, and me and my girl talk about this every, every once in a while, um, kind of like the trappings of it. Um, how some people say, you know, people are becoming less and less social because of gaming and stuff like that. And I actually think it's just the opposite. I think gaming gives people a great outlet, a way to meet other people. You've got people out there that are agoraphobes, which is a person who hates to go outside. They're actually terrified. Large crowds and stuff. You know, so you got a person like that, and they're pretty much trapped in their house. You know, um, or when they go outside, it's for a very, very limited period of time to buy food and stuff like that. You know, um, so when you when you look at a gaming environment, they have that freedom, the anonymity, to do to go online and meet people without that fear. You know, and I think that's amazing. You know, being able to. St- exactly. Exactly. You know, and to me, that's one of, one of the best things about gaming where, where it's at now, where you can meet somebody in Germany, in France, you know, learn a little bit, a bit about their culture, make the world a little bit of a smaller place. You know, I think that's pretty amazing, and a lot of times that's downplayed. They say, oh, well, gaming is the root of all violence in, in the world. I'm like, really? Really? I thought you can go back centuries before gaming even existed, you know, in, 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 in this current state, and we've still got axe murderers, we've got serial killers, we've got dictators, you know, no video games, so obviously all those elements were still there before games came around, you know, so you can't blame games on that, you know, that's, and they say how it, the, it makes them a little bit um, desensitized to violence and stuff. I'm like, well, see, that's where parenting comes into play. Take your responsibility for your child, watch them what they play, talk to them about it, making sure they understand this is fantasy, this is reality. That's a parent's problem. You know, at least that's the way, that's the way I look at it. The Oculus Rift is an actual VR headset. If you don't know anything about it, uh, I'll highly recommend you go to like YouTube maybe, type in Oculus Rift, and look at it. It's freaking amazing. Um, and if you guys have not watched any of it yet, I will highly recommend Sword Art on, no, Log Horizon. Log Horizon is an amazing anime. And it's kind of on the same line as um, Sword Art Online, except you don't die in real in real life when you die in the game. Other stuff happens to you. So I right, Twitch loves to be twitchy. But yeah, um, Log Horizon is an amazing, um, simply amazing anime. You get a chance, definitely watch it. If you guys are off, you know, for the holiday season, watch it. Right now, it's in the second season, and it's really, really getting seriously good. Um, check it, refresh your uh, browser, man, because on my end it's working. I 
All right, Nick, you have a good one. Hey, Therantos, how you doing, man? How you doing? Yeah. That's looking good. Alright, let's cut out this piece here. Then I can um, sand them down. And then seal and paint them. So if this torso is not done by today, it will definitely be finished by Tuesday and be ready for just um, the sealing process, which is basically me spraying the whole thing down with um, a layer of clear coat and then going back behind that and painting this stuff over the whole piece. This is um, a really high quality polymer varnish with um, UVS, UVLS in it as well. So she could be out there in the sun all day with this on and it's not gonna fade on her. You know, the sun's rays won't chip it, none of that stuff. So y'all really keep it looking good. And this blade is just about done. All right, chicken plate, you have a good one, man. Have a good holiday if I don't see you. I actually have an air, uh, a, a compressor made for airbrushing, so I just hooked it up right to it. If you have one of those big ass tanks, then, then yeah, you're going to need a regulator. Which, honestly, I want to get one of those big tanks. Because um, with the big tanks, you can hook up um, three or four airbrushes to it at one time, you know, which is good for um, time management. You know, you can, I, I, I can load in all the colors that I need, you know, in those three or four airbrushes, and then just you know get busy painting. I don't have to stop and clean out each airbrush every time I'm changing my colors, you know. And that's also important too, time management when you're doing your projects. The less time you have to worry about setting up or cleaning up, that's more time you can put towards the actual work at hand and be done with it faster. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and mute my microphone. So I can start getting some drumming on.
it. So these two pieces are looking good. So right now I'm going to go ahead and put this um, outside of my board and spray it down real quick with the uh, Plasti Dip. And then from there, I can go ahead and paint this on it. That's drying. We'll move on to the next step. Uh, I'm gonna rig up the loincloth. Which will flow right here like this. It's gonna be right up underneath there. So like that. Turn on my glue gun. Um, you know, I didn't think about that. Um, I might. Just might. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to let this come curve down a little bit more. So I'm going to hit it with the heat gun. And then just, you know, bend it. <laughs> there we go. All right, so I'm going to be using um my big clip for this one. This bad boy right here. Now, there's a couple of ways that I, I can do this. Um, I can simply take a wide band of Wonderflex and I can run it through here, bend it flat like that, and attach it that way, <clears throat> which works too. Um, I can also use some fabric and glue the fabric itself to the underside of this which will allow for a bit more um, flexibility of the piece, which I'm gonna probably go that route. 
Uh, I'm still going to end up using some Wonder Flex though, just to, you know, um, seal it even better and tighter to the foam. But I think I definitely will go with the the cloth aspect. You gotta be tricky when you um, when you're working with elastic as your cloth. You gotta make sure if it's in the area where you don't want um, want it to stretch. You gotta make sure that you're cutting your elastic, you know, in the, in that direction. Like this one here pulls this way, but not not this way. So this is how I, I want to actually. Put it in here so that way you know over time it would not sag down it would always stay like this if I did it the way it actually expands you can pull on it and after a while it will actually stretch so you don't want that and if you don't want to worry about that at all you can just go ahead and you can use your nylon which doesn't stretch at all you know This stuff also works really, really good. It's black felt. You know, it, you do get a little bit of a stretch out of it. Not a lot, though. But when you're putting together um, pieces that are light and small, it's really great for that. You can also use this to line the inside of your foam projects. Because this absorbs sweat really, really well. Like in a lot of my helmets, I line it with this. So that way it wicks the sweat off the person's face and absorbs it into this. You also want to be careful that you give yourself a good amount of room to glue down these pieces like this here. This is too short. You know, ideally you want about that much um, you know, fabric to work with. That way you can glue down about that much. The more glue you have on these pieces, um, the stronger the bond, the longer they'll last. And you know what? I think I'm going to use my black felt. Because that way I can get a nice wide band and get it as long as I want it to be. Thank you. 
here. This felt also sticks really, really good to hot glue too. That's a good reason to have it. Why I'm using the um, the fabric to make these straps instead of the Wonderflex is because I want this piece to be able to have a um, good range of movement because it's going to be you know in front of her legs you know so as she's walking it's going to be moving so if I use the fabric it will allow this piece here to you know go back and forth freely you know, with no problem. down flat to the inner piece that I have here before I attach um, the parachute clips. The prodigal son returns. Looks like operation from over here. It is. Mm. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is attach it to this. And I'm not going to attach it in the front like that. It's going to be behind it. Next, after I got this down here, I'm going to kind of wide man of this stuff here and overlay it. And once again, with the Wonderflex, it is heat activated, so you don't have to glue it down. You can just use a heat gun, and now I'll do the job as well. I'm just going to speed it up by doing like this. Because the hot glue is wickedly hot, so it would still bond very, very well with the um, Wonderflex. And I can always go back over it, which I probably will with the heat gun. Just to get every section fused, so to speak.
This stuff sticks to damn near everything, except for like wax or oils, but um, one of those some really, really good stuff. And I'm tapping it fast because this sucker gets hot. But yeah, so now you have the Wonder Flex, which is bonded to the black felt as well as being bonded to the foam. So this piece pretty much is not going nowhere. It'll actually end up having to rip the foam first um, before it separates, which is pretty much what you want. bit of glue just here on the tip the edge here just to further anchor it when it comes to all of your um, rigging using more support than less is always preferable you always want to have more always Thank you so much for a follow. Hmm. Interesting name. Ikevis? Ikvis? Ikvis, I think it is. Welcome to the clan. You are a proud dragon warrior. Um, she is. She likes her games. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get her up to our level of gaming. She loves social games. She loves, uh, she likes Minecraft, stuff like that. Um, but she will be getting a copy of Landmark. Hey, Puffy Six, welcome to the clan. You are a proud dragon warrior. But yeah, um, once I can get her a better computer, she will be getting a copy of Landmark. She has no choice. <laughs> You know, and she she will she she likes a game where she can build, you know, at her own pace. And Landmark is great for that. There's no rat race, there's no rush. You do it at your own, you know, time slot, your own pace. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's a great game, you know, I, I love the fact that, that Zoe decided to um, take the tools that they were using for EverQuest next and make Landmark. You know, I think it's amazing how we'll be able to build our own dungeons, build our own raids, you know, and whatnot in it. It's going to be amazing. Alright, there we go. Ain't going nowhere. So now, I might have to, have to take this off of um, the uh, torso form so I can lay it down and then glue this way up in here, like that. Yeah. Let's pull this off. Because I got to get way up in there. So as you can see, I, I have already started a little bit of the rigging itself, you know, getting these parts together. So you can see what she has to go through to get in and out. So she's definitely going to need help. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. Very similar to it. Free. 
All right. So now you get to see the inside <laughs> of it. All the inner workings. As a matter of fact, I can put some more glue up in here. All right, Val, you have a good night, man. And hello, Akuma. It's always important to just um, go back into, you know, your work. Whenever you see two pieces of foam meeting, just go ahead and put a bead of glue, you know, where they meet. It just helps to just reinforce the bond of it all. So uh, this piece right here needs to sit. Like right about here on the inside. Just gotta make sure that this bad boy is centered. And of course, once again, I'll grab some of the uh, Wonderflex and overlay the, um, the felt with it. In here, I'm gonna heat up first. I have to bend in there. Seconds really, about 20 30 seconds before I flip it around so you guys can see it. The idea of putting the parachute clip there instead of just gluing this um, hard to the, um, the foam, once again, there's movement issues, but also. You gotta think about how is she gonna pack this bad boy up for traveling. So the more ways you can break something down, the easier it'll be for your client to fit those pieces, you know, where it needs to be fitted so it can go with her. But 
yeah, Contest, I was talking about your, your Fairy Tierra a little bit earlier in, in the uh, stream today. That's going to be fun doing. And that's going to be, 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 be basically mellow work, um, some soldering, and some gems. So pretty much totally different from my normal form work. Alright. Bear, huh? So that bad boy is in place. And it still gives her room to be able to walk and stuff because it does pop up. So that's done. My emblems should be dry so I can hand paint those with the um the gold. Mm. I wonder if I have any more my gold spray. Let me check and see if I have any more my gold spray. I will be right back, guys. <laughs> So I put a coat of gold on it. I'm probably going to have to put three or four coats of gold on there. Um, but I want to see how this first coat dries. Because anybody knows that paints with gold paint. There are varying um, shades of gold. So I want to see how that works out first. Okay, so in the meantime, we can work on this bad boy here. Actually, I need to 
dirty this up some too, so let's turn the airbrush back on. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm dirty this up real quick. So, you know, continues that flow. Kitty, how you doing? I uh, know we're definitely doing good on this end. Doing real good. It's always good to, like I said, give yourself that time to work and paint. That way, if you've missed any areas, you know, you can take care of that. And give you time to, you know, look back at the work, you know. Put some fresh eyes. Get all the little nooks and crannies. What? No. That is your job, nobody else's. And one of his friends asked if he could spend a night, and we got a rule with Daniel that um, his room must be clean before you can have company. And his friend wants to know if you can come over and help him clean. I'm like, nope, that is your job, not theirs. That is your room. Hey, these kids will try to get over any chance they get. There we go. Now it looks more worn.
Mm-hmm, yep, I remember. Ah, oh, you missed out. <laughs> yep, she is a proud grandma. So now she gets to spoil some kids and then send them back to their mama. <laughs> to paint the inside of this but you know just give them custom a little more you know eye candy on a piece you know and I stop and I look at it and I examine it from different angles This is what I call the nitpicking stage. You know, when you're literally going over every edge, every nook and cranny of your work to make sure everything is correct as it should be.